Hello, this is your pro Professor Katrina Kopalath, and this is the third video, third part of the Elements and Principles lecture for 2D design. We're going to be looking at slides 44 through 63 of the PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and start the lecture, and you have the PDF if you want to follow along or look at it later. So, beginning on slide 44, um, we're talking about economy. Economy is simplifying an image down to its basic essentials. You're stripping away all of the details and you're really just looking at basic shapes. Um, you're eliminating uh, distracting elements and you're using simpli simplification through abstraction. Let's look at this example. These are some bowls from Pablo Picasso, and you can see how um, he's gotten more and more simple, um, starting really at a very realist uh, image or drawing. Our um, blind contour line drawings were a good example of using economy to simplify down a form. This is Edward Hopper, Rooms by the Sea, uh, from 1951. And his painting style, you can really see basic shapes and how light and shadow create um, economy in these shapes. Whether you're going into commercial design or studio art, simplifying an image down to its basic essentials is a great skill. And this is really what um, we would be learning in Adobe Illustrator because Adobe Illustrator is a software that uses shapes. Um, so this is an example of something you could create in Adobe Illustrator. Um, okay, let's move on to harmony, which is relating visual elements within a composition. It's achieved through by using repetition, rhythm, and closure. Um, you can have harmony by using a similarity of sizes, shapes, colors, values, and forms that are harmonious, that work together. Okay, um, too much harmony can bring out monotony. We remember with symmetry that symmetrical, um, bilateral symmetry might feel like it's not moving. It might not feel dynamic. Harmony is relating visual elements within a composition. Um, it brings about a cohesive, pleasing interaction achieved through rhythm, rate, repetition, and closure. So we're going to look at all of these um, definitions and what they mean. Uh, harmony through repetition. So um, in Sandy Skoglin's photo, we see these, or it's like an installation art. Um, and photo, so we see the repetition that's kind of bringing our eye around. Harmony can be used in pattern. This is a Klimt painting, and he really goes into this intricate detail. Um, all of these patternings kind of work together, are similar, um, which bring about harmony. We've got harmony by using rhythm. We've got these repeating um, windows, but they're not repeating identically like the cats. We've got um, a rhythm going on. So yellow, dark, mm -hmm. yellow, dark, right? So this kind of creates the harmony that you see. Harmony can be created um, by closure. Closure is creating an implied completeness, implied, right? It's not totally complete, um, by the eye of the viewer, observing parts but perceiving the whole. 
<clears throat> so if you see this, um, if these were farther away, if these dark circles were farther away, it would it would be harder to see the negative space in here, and the closure um, that's being created wouldn't be as strong. Humans tend to perceive an enclosed space by completing a contour and ignoring the gaps in the figure. The close proximity of these circles encourages us to see this triangle. Too much harmony creates a visual experience that is so bland that the viewer is not engaged. Too much harmony can be boring. So at, with harmony, you also have the opposite, which could be called dissonance. So harmony and dissonance are antonyms, they mean the opposite. Um, dissonance is not harmonious and it's purposeful. We have Henri Matisse um, here, portrait of Madame Matisse. Um, Matisse was part of Le Fauve's movement, meaning wild beasts and they liked to ruffle feathers. They liked to do things that were um, not, that were controversial, right? So look at these colors that are being used. They're very um, almost harsh in contrast and it's creating a lot of dissonance. Okay, let's move on to variety, um, which is created um, it's creating diversity within a composition. Variety can be achieved in countless ways by changing the sizes, the proximity, how close things are, contrast, a variety in contrast, um, orientation, right, how things are positioned or rotated, um, and the shapes a form creates um, using variety. One can also crop forms and manipulate the color properties. So too much as too much harmony can be boring, too much variety can be chaotic and feel unstable. So it's good to have a mix of some variety and some harmony um, so that you get something that is both interesting to look at and also um, pleasing to the eye. This is an illustration by Yuko Shimizu. Uh, she is a Japanese illustrator. She lives in New York and she's been pretty successful commercially. This is her cover design for the Walrus magazine. Here we have um, variety in shape. Um, and we also have a lot of harmony. So. I'm going to ask you in the discussion comments, what about this piece is harmonious and what about this piece uses variety? All right, so here we have an example of so much variety that we're having an experience that feels hard to look at, um, overdone and chaotic. It's also, um, there's so many colors, right, that I can't really focus on one area. Unity is um, the ratio, right, the right appropriate ratio between harmony and variety. Good design requires an appropriate ratio of harmony and variety. This dynamic equilibri equilibrium is pleasing to the eye. So tell me in the comments here below what, first this is slide 59, what about this image is harmonious and what about this image has variety, it's different. So you can think similar and different, right? Harmony, variety. Un so we're talking about unity. Um, we've got unrelated shapes. The shapes don't have unity. 
and unified shapes, speaking on closure, thinking about proximity. Which design of these three is the most unified? So we've got number one, number two, and number three. So in the comments below, tell me which number one, number two, or number three, which picture do you think has the most unity? When you unify a design, you're creating a cohesive whole or a feeling of completeness. This is related to gestalt, which is a German meaning. It, gestalt is a German term meaning a total mental picture or con conception. The whole is more important than the sum of its parts. So thinking about um, you can't see the forest for the trees, right? So looking at just one tree, if we really zoom out, we're going to see the whole forest, which might be thinking about the gestalt, the whole picture, the whole um, design, as zooming. So when you're working um, in Illustrator or even in Photoshop, pressing Command or Control minus and plus to zoom out, look at the composition as a whole, see where there's unity, see where you have things that are similar, that are different, negative space, um, and then when you're zooming out you'll also be able to see things using economy, right? Back to the beginning. Stripping something down to its basic elements. If you were painting, you would squint at your painting um, to really see the shapes. Alright, so that is the end of this lecture. Um, in the discussions tab, you can answer the, the few questions that were mentioned.